Now, it's come to my mind that many people that book a training course in Visio miss fundamental tips, hints and tips as to what they should be doing so that they can tr truly draw an organizational chart effectively. So this is what we're going to go through. We're going to go through laying out a page in an organization chart, so how to lay that out. We're also going to go through how to... Uh, separate your organization chart onto separate individual pages and we'll look at resizing the organization chart as well. So let's delve straight in. So this is the splash screen as you can see in Visio. Uh, you can see just around the screen here or maybe on the right hand side you can see around the screen there different options uh, that are available. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the business side of things. So if you click on the business template and then it will search for the business template and then we're going to click on organizational chart and it will give you this box appearing here. Now if you have an organizational chart already prepared in a spreadsheet you can import it. So please click on the link um, which over on this side to so click on the link for creating an, org an organization chart from an Excel spreadsheet and I'll take you straight through that. There's also another link as well I'll, I'll put on the video that will link to creating an organization chart but breaking it up by department. Uh, really nice little tip there. So what we're going to do is we've got a couple of options here. So if I click on this one, uh, just zoom in just to show here, you can see this one is best used to show hierarchy levels and reporting relationships in an attractive modern format. So it's hierarchy levels. Uh, if I click on this one here, okay, and then I've just sort of zoom, move myself out of the way. So when I zoom in, I'm not, there we go. So here we go. Best to use organizational levels and reporting relationships, shape sizes to show the hierarchy level. So basically they're doing the same thing. It's just different um, shapes. Yeah. So I'm going to take the square one and I'm going to choose metric units and then I'm going to choose create. Okay, so we've got our first organization chart. We've got something laid out there to give you an idea of how these things work. So what you can do and what's firstly very handy is shape data to display the shape data window. So what we're going to do is we want you to click on view just at the top here. So if you click on view and then what we're going to do is afterwards click on the drop down list that says task panes, these task panes drop down that little just arrow just there. Give it a click and then what we'll do is we're going to click on shape data and then that will show, oh, let me do that again, and that will show you date, shape date, data just here and that will show you data on all of the shapes. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, firstly, let's pop it out and then what I want you to do is click on this little push pin just down at the bottom which will pin that shape data window to the right hand side. So now when I click on a shape, I get lots of information behind that shape. Now this is particularly handy, especially if you've zoomed right back in Visio. I don't need to Visio zoom back that much. I'm just using the control and the wheel on my mouse. So using the wheel on my mouse to zoom back and forward, um, which will help out there. But if I've zoomed back a little bit, I'm just going to pan across as well. I can use that by holding down the control and the shift key on the keyboard and then dragging with the right mouse button so I can pan around a bit. If I drag back a little bit, I might be able to not be able to make out these shapes here, this pink one or this blue ones, these blue ones here, because the writing's just too small. However, when I click on the shape, I can not only see the information, I can edit it. So I'd strongly recommend using shape data so you can edit the information behind the shapes. So this, here we go. So let's have a look. And, and what we're going to do is give her a name. So click here and call her Sharon Boss Lady. And her title is the CEO. That's great. Uh, if I wanted to change the title, I can just click and type. If I wanted to type a email address, I can do as well. There's also information to link to or create a calendar link as well. If she's got an online calendar, if I wanted to do that, I can put a link there. And I can also choose the department here. So if I put that as um, directors. If I click the next one just down here, I've got manager one. So what I'll do is I can change that Tony Hobbs. There we go. And there, oops, sorry, make sure. <laughs> so marketing manager. And then I can put the name here, Tony Hobbs. And as you can see here, I can type a lot of extra information in. So say, for instance, if I'm, okay, I, I've got this information here. I've got these two employees here. If I need to add another employee in, I can add a position notch. Now, what I do here is I need to drag it in on top 
of the manager. You can see that I'm dragging the position knot on top of the manager. So when I let go, then the position is then linked to the manager. Try, try, try not to worry about the layout at this point in time. There's a couple of quick buttons I'll show you at the end um, a little bit later on as to how we do the layout. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna get this rid of, bit of that thing at the bottom, that's just a little help. Uh, I'm gonna close off my pan and zoom window, I don't need that at the moment as well. That's fantastic, great. So say for instance, I've got a few more positions, I can drag the positions on like so, and I can drag a lot of positions. And sometimes if it's not going right, and fantastic that this isn't going right here, what's the temptation is, it's so tempting to click and start dragging and moving things around and you'll be here forever. Why well, I highly recommend that you use the organization chart tab here at the very top of the screen. So if you click on that, the way it works, if you click on the superior shape, so in this case, you click on the manager, so Tony Hobbs. I'm just gonna click on this little push pin. Do you remember the push pin we clicked on earlier? We can click on that again, and that will turn on auto hide to hide that. Yeah, that's good. So <clears throat> you click on the superior shape, then on the org chart here, we go to the layout section just over here, and then this layout drop down menu. When you click on the layout drop down menu, you've got various options as to how you want to lay the page out. So if I click on the first one as a standard, I can see, well, oh, that's just way too wide. That's not working, is it? Uh, okay, let's just try something else here. Let's try this side by side one. Ah, that looks a little better. So you can see it's nice and easy to lay out your page. You don't have to start clicking and dragging and moving. The same with this one here. If I want to change this and then I can drag, uh, click on the layout or I've got this one automatic at the top. I can click on that and it'll automatically lay the organization chart out. Great, but I hear you cry. You have 20 or so shapes. Well, let's say we add in another shape. Let's do that, shall we? So we're gonna add in another manager. So we'll add that, drag that onto the executive. Manager appears down there. I'm gonna use my shape then we do there and uh, let's have a look. The job title is sales um, director. There we go. And the department is directors. And the name is Mr. Wilson. There we go. So let's say, for instance, he has 20 people working for him doing sales, all different types of sales avenues here. But let's just see if we can add 20. Well, we could use the staff shape. Uh, there we have the staff not shape here. We can add that on. But we could also use multiple shapes. This is a very handy shape this is here. So if I drag multiple shapes across, and where is he? There he is, Mr. Wilson, dragging on the top. I will get an option here, as you can see, to decide which shape I want. So in this case, I'm going to select staff. And then here, I can choose how many of each shape that I want to include. So let's say I want to choose staff, and let's make it difficult, shall we? Let's say he has 20 staff. So put 20 here, staff here, click on OK, and you can see that the 20 staff eventually will be added. While that's doing that, I'm going to close off that, it's fine. Now, if I just pan back here, you can see, oh, it's just looking a real mess here. So if your page looks a total mess, your organizational chart, what I recommend is go up to the beginning, click on the first uh, person here, Sharon, um, so what's her name here, Sharon, Lock, Sharon Boss Lady. <laughs> click on Sharon Boss Lady at the top. Uh, in fact, you don't actually have to click on it. I can just click on the relayout page and it relayouts at the page as best as it possibly can. If this person's still at the bottom, I want them in the middle. I'm just gonna click here and choose the uh, standard layout here at the top just to get that one down. So we've got this one here. As I said, I want this person in the middle. So I click on the, on the uh, right here and then I can choose these arrows here to move the person, to move it left and right. So if I click on the move, it will just swap that person around. But as you can see, I've still got these lots and lots and lots and lots of employees. Now, to lay them out, I can go to layouts just here. So do you remember the layouts that we had over here? Yeah. Um, now these ones at the bottom in particular are quite handy. Yeah, you can have ones going in with the little connection points coming in from the side, or you can have the connection points coming in at the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure you click on the actual shape. So that's the shape of uh, Mr. Wilson. We'll go to the layout drop down menu and I'm gonna choose it going in from the top. And let's have a look and see how that looks. There we go, it's starting to make a little bit more sense. I'm gonna click on the relay layout button here and see what happens there. Brilliant, so we're just starting to squeeze all of this on the page. As you can see, it's just a little too large. So what can we do with that? 
Well, what I can do is there's options here to change the sizes of the boxes and the spacing between them. So for instance, if I say selected all of these, if I draw a box around that, so if you're a box around these ones here, I can reduce the size of those boxes here if I wanted to. Uh, I can do the same with the others. In fact, let me undo that one here. There we go. That's good. Uh, oh, let's just redo one more. There we go. So if or when click on relayouts. Brilliant. So what I can do here is if I let's just try selecting these two boxes here holding down the shift key and selecting these six boxes here. And I'm just gonna make those a little smaller, a little smaller this way. Absolutely, that's great, excellent. Um, yeah, that looks good. The other things as well is I'm gonna select all of them. I don't need the picture. So if I highlight these all here, and then there's an option for picture, I'm just gonna click on deletes for the picture because I'm just gonna get rid of the picture. There's no need for me to see that, it just makes up, takes up a lot of space. It's, it's going quite well. In fact, if I select these three here, what I can do is I can adjust the spacing just to bring it together a little bit. And now I've still got them on a page like so. With me so far. All right, so it's a fantastic tool. See, I haven't dragged any of these at all. I've just used this layout section here. I've used the spacing here. And then I've also used the height and the width over here. Make sure I delete the picture. There's no need for that. That makes gives you more space as well. But let's create what I call the impossible situation. Say, for instance, there's a, uh, another manager. Let's drag them in here on the top. That's good. Oh, let's just delete the picture from that one here. Um, I'll talk about creating stencils another time because you notice every time I drag a manager notch out here, the picture isn't the picture is automatically included whether or not I've asked for it. But what you can do is you can create your own shapes. And we'll look at that in another, uh, to another video. Uh, I've got a chance and if I've already done the video, I'll put the link up. If not, the video is not there yet. Great. Okay. So this manager, uh, let's go and add in, oops, let's maximize that. That's good. So let's go in and add in a name for this manager. So we'll call this one uh, Sally uh, Funny. There we go. And she is in charge of R&D. Let's say this organization, this imaginary organization is a huge one and they have 50 R&D support specialists on this particular tier. So uh, let me just drag in the multiple shapes, drag that on top and it's staff and I'm gonna type in 50. So let's just zoom in so we really appreciate the magnitude of what we're doing here. We have 50 shapes, we have staff. So let's click on okay. And as you can see, it will eventually process the shapes, da 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 talk amongst yourselves, and eventually, bang, we have 50 shapes. But as you can see, if I just zoom across here, it goes all the way down. I mean, there's just tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of shapes. If, for instance, even if I go up to layout and choose this side by side, it starts to make it a little better, but as you can see, eventually, it's just too much. Um, you know, information on this uh, here. If I click on relayout to see if I can have a best fighting chance of getting this all together, it's, it's gonna be on another page. So you can't fit everything on one page. Yes, you can select everything. If I uh, hold down Control, Shift and W, which allows you, oops, sorry, that's it, does my camera in actually, that's good, but you can click on view, you'll be able to do this. Uh, and then, yeah, fit to, window, control, shift, and W, you can do that to fit to window. Even if I selected everything and made it smaller as well, based on the org chart, it's gonna be a real squash, isn't it? So what you, we can do is we can hide, we can create what they call a synchronized copy. So down here on page one, what we could do is we can rename that page. So if we go and we say, right, this one's gonna be called, uh, let's say for instance, um, directors. Okay, and then we had another page, and this one we call R and D, and let's do one for sales as well. So if we click on another page, and we'll call that sales. So let's just have a look at the bottom, see what we've got. So you see, we have one page, which is our main one, which we've called directors. We have another page, which is called 
R and D. And then thirdly, we have our sales page available. So let's have a quick look here. So if we go back to the directors, uh, I'm just gonna zoom in. I'm holding down control and space. You see my mouse, mouse turns into a magnifying glass. I can draw around an area I wanna zoom in on and then hold down control and not control and space, control and shift, mind you, sorry, control and shift. That's what I'm wanting to say. Uh, holding down control and shift and I can draw around what I wanna zoom in on or I can drag with the right mouse button. So Mr. Wilson, sales director, what I wanna do is all of these subordinates, all of this stuff, I wanna put on another page. So what I can do is right click on Mr. Wilson. I can go down to and click on create synchronized copy. Oops, yeah, so create synchronized copy. So let's give that a right click, create synchronized copy. So I wanna create a synchronized copy on an existing page and then that's the sales page. Now this is the all important button, this one just here, just zoom in so you can see it. So you see it says hide subordinates on original page. So that's what we're gonna do. So make sure that's checked, click on okay. And eventually it's created a, a synchronized copy. There we go. So on the sales page, I can see the sales director, Mr. Wilson here. And then if I go back to the director's page just here, I can see my sales director just here. So let's do the same with, I think it was R&D. So over here for San Sally Funny, right click, create synchronized copy, hide subordinates on original page, and we'll do it on the R&D page. So that's because she's R&D. Click on OK and eventually you've got a synchronized copy on another page. So there we go, so I've got a synchronized copy on the other page. I might need to update this a little bit by drawing and then making sure the picture's all deleted uh, as well. Again, with a shape and updating the shapes, I thought I had the, um, the notch one, so if I just click on that, just apply that style, that's off the organization chart to it. Uh, that's great, excellent. Oh, again, let's just change the layout so it's, a little better. Hopefully you're getting much more familiar with using the layout and moving things around just makes it a little easier. And there we go, it's nice on one page. It looks great. I can do the same with the sales as well. Just click on, yeah, click on the notch. That's great. And then I might just have to change the layout afterwards as well. Let's just do that, layouts. I'll do this one here. So the beauty of this is, is say you are printing this organization chart and page, you know, different pages. Uh, you have now three pages of the organization chart that you can print. If you went to file and print, there we go, and you're looking at a print preview, you can see your three separate pages. Okay, in fact, I might need to sort that one out. Uh, I'll do that in just a second. Let me just, in fact, I'll do it right, let's do it right now. So back to directors, and hopefully just one quick, quick of the, uh, the, um, Let's have a look here, where am I? There we go. Let's just zoom in, there we go. Uh, let's click on the relayout button, see if it just salves, it salvages everything. Yeah, that's good. I'm just gonna click on the superior shape just at the top. And when I do that, notice all the other shapes follow. And I've got space to spare. If I look in very closely, just in here, I can see if I just pan over here, this particular, that shape there that will show that I have others, there's a sub synchronized copy going on. There's shape synchronized beneath that shape. If I want to see that, then what I can do is I can just right click and I can say show um, subordinates, show subordinates, or I can click on the show hide subordinates button here at the top. So you can click on that so I can see the subordinates for this one, it will come up. Uh, I might need to rearrange the uh, the page where I can see that better. So say for instance, I've got this all on an A4 page or I've got an A5 page, or I just want to print a big PDF out of it. I can click show and hide subordinates for that one. I can do the same for this one here. Yeah, that's good. Maybe a relayout to get that all on there. That's it, so it's, we can actually see it, brilliant. So that's all relayout. And then I can just print that as a one big PDF where it doesn't really matter with the page size. And then again, if I want to hide the subordinates, let me just select both of these ones here, show hide subordinates so it shines, hides them, then click on a relayout. That relayout puts it all back. I hope you get the idea and, and it's working for you. Now, the last thing I did say that this is a synchronized copy, which basically means whatever I do on R&D and sales will shine through to the other pages. So what I'll do here is if I go to R&D, okay, and then if I then zoom in a little bit here and then add in a name. 
So here we go. I've zoomed in. I've got a name here. So what I'll just do is just double click on that name. Let's go Clark uh, Abel. There we go. And there we go. And let's just double click on the title. Again, I'm changing it here, but I ideally, because I've already showed you that, do as I say, not as I do, I can then change this one here. So this was R&D department and then Clark Abel. And then we can say, um, there we go, junior research, oh, let's say senior, senior researcher. Yeah, there we go. So we've got this here, but the beauty of that is if I go back to directors and then I show the subordinates of, oh, rather this one. Let's just have a quick relay out so I can see the, uh, the page. There we go. And if I just drag across and see if I zoom in, there you can see Clark Abel, senior researcher. So there we go. So what we've done is we've created an organizational chart. We've separated it by page. We've created a synchronized copy as well and a little tips on laying out the page. This is a computer tutoring Excel. So get the right program. This is a computer tutoring Visio organizational chart tutorial. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Please subscribe if you haven't done so. There's going to be more videos coming out. I'm going to try and do a few Visio ones. Um, and there's also, we'll also do a couple of others. We do many other different programs, including Adobe be ones the illustrator the photoshop of course including access and word and excel so please subscribe if you haven't any done so if you haven't already done so if you've got anything out of this video whatsoever then please give it a thumbs up just say i like it and that'd be great makes us feel good and encourages us to do more thank you so much and thank you for watching